Hello and welcome to my Mexican Grand Prix driver predictions, the series in which you guys, the audience, can get involved. By following that link that's in the top line of the description, you can get entered into the audience prediction championships. So without further ado, let us jump on into the Mexican Grand Prix predictions for qualifying, a bold statement for the whole weekend, and also the race as well. So how exactly does this series work? By following that link in the top line of the description down below, you'll be asked for your top five for qualifying, your top five for the race, and one bold encompassing statement throughout the entire weekend. Now, just a couple rules regarding all of the submissions. You can make as many as you like, all the way up until the start of Q1 on Saturday, or if there is a sprint race, up until the beginning of the sprint race. So if, like me, you want to make all of your predictions before the start of any of the weekend's action, I'm currently making these predictions on Tuesday before the Grand Prix, by all means get those submitted beforehand. But if you would like to wait until the end of FP3, just before the start of qualifying, to get a slightly better view and idea of what the weekend is going to hold, then by all means do that as well. So there is absolutely no penalty in the number of submissions that you make. Equally, all of these top fives are pre penalty. So if someone has an incoming grid penalty for whatever reason in qualifying, completely ignore it. It will be the results for the end of qualifying, not the starting grid. Exactly the same for the race. So if someone starts, or sorry, someone finishes the race in P3, but they have a five or 10 second grid penalty, or blah, 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 blah. then exactly the same for the race. If someone crosses the line in P3 and has a five or 10 second time penalty and drops to P4 or P5, it will be taken pre penalty. And then the rules for the bold statement is it can literally be anything you like. It can apply to practice, to qualifying, or the race, or all of it. It can be as sort of lenient as you like as a driver is going to score points. It's pretty boring and a pretty bland statement, but it's going to score you some extra points. Or it can be fairly specific, or it can be fairly specific that is entirely up to you. So let's go over the scoring for each of these questions. You will score yourself two points for a correct driver in the correct position for your top five for qualifying, and one point if they are in the incorrect position inside your top five. Exactly the same point scoring is done for the top five for the race, and then you will receive five bonus points if your bold statement is accurate for a total points of 25. And I believe the closest someone has got for a weekend score is 22 maybe 21. It's in the 20s, definitely, but no one has of yet scored 25 out of 25. And just briefly going over the current leaderboards, we have 129 individual entries into this series, which is absolutely mega. It is Evan Darcy who has a significant point lead over Joe Bishop, the only two people to be in 200 points. Then Arturo Zalazar on 197, three ahead of Daniel B. And you have myself and Hal joint on 172, and these are the only people that have really entered into every single round of the series, or at least a fairly large chunk. And as we scroll down this leaderboard, we get into the people that have only entered into a few of the races that have been held so far this year. We have people like AB Baby, Cosmos Trek, Callum, Liam, Kevin as well. Then of course there is a second leaderboard for all of the entrants who have only made it into a couple of the races so far. There is then a second half of this leaderboard down into the single digits worth of scores. And then there is even more entries as well. It is absolutely amazing to see how many people have been getting involved with this series. Now this leaderboard is the summated leaderboard for every single score that you have entered into this series. Now it's not entirely fair to all of those people who haven't entered into every single race so far this season. And in order to account for that, I've created a average points for the entries that you have made leaderboard. However, I won't be displaying that in this video here as it will bulk it down. I'll be displaying that in the video that gets released on Sunday for my race review. And with all of that out of the way, make sure to get your predictions all sent in using that link in the top line of the description. We will now take a look at my entries into this weekend's Grand Prix. We will start with qualifying, and for pole position, I've gone for Sergio Perez. This driver has had an incredible upturn in pace in the last few races. He was almost, almost on track for a first pole position in Turkey, and at home... It's just going to be boosted just that little bit more. And we know that Mexico is a Red Bull track. So I'm expecting them to just be the class of the field this weekend. And especially single lap pace and qualifying. And Perez, I just think he can actually master it. He's slowly gotten better in the Red Bull so far this season. So I think he is going to get pole position. 
And in P2, I've gone for Max Verstappen, the current championship leader. And again, it is a Red Bull suited track. So I think he's going to get quite comfortably onto the front row. With Lewis Hamilton down in P3, Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari in P4, and Valtteri Bottas in the other Mercedes in P5. Now, that's quite an interesting choice. As we know, the Mercedes is fairly strong at pretty much every circuit, but Mexico has been one of their struggling tracks. They've had to introduce some fairly aggressive cooling tactics in Mexico due to the high altitude, which other teams haven't necessarily had to implement. But I feel like Hamilton is just that step above the rest of the field. As for Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, he has put in some stellar performances in qualifying so far this year and also in the races as well, but mainly qualifying, he is definitely punched above his weight and the Ferrari I just feel is going to work that little bit more than the McLarens overall and those two teams are easily a cut above the rest of the midfield, which is like the Alpines, the Aston Martins and the Alfa Tories as well. But I really wouldn't be surprised if we saw Pierre Gasly sort of poke his nose into the top five in Mexico. And from the qualifying top five, we will take a look at my race top five. For the Grand Prix victory, I've equally gone for Sergio Perez. Starting from pole position, as long as Red Bull don't implement any stupid team orders, because that would suck. That would suck so bad if they were running P1 and P2 with Perez in front of Verstappen comfortably and then they ordered a team swap ah i don't even that doesn't even bear thinking about but i do think sergio perez is going to come away with a grand prix victory at mexico and the crowds would go insane imagine the stadium section if sergio perez gets a grand prix victory that would be absolutely mega and for P2, I've gone for Lewis Hamilton above Max Verstappen. Again, race pace wise, I really don't know. I just haven't got a clue. I just think Hamilton could have something in the bag over Max Verstappen. He could have a bad start for Verstappen. I'm not 100% sure, but I just think Hamilton could get the better of him this weekend. And P4, Valtteri Bottas. P5, Charles Leclerc. So it's the same top five for qualifying, just in a slightly different order as... I don't think much is going to happen this Mexican Grand Prix. We've had a couple, we, oh, we've had like a spat of really boring races. Ah, is boring the right word? Um, not action races. Ah, I don't know what the word is. We've had a couple of races that have been fairly uneventful and not a lot has happened where there haven't been too many DNFs slash unexpected incidents. So I don't think much is going to happen this weekend in terms of positional changes, which is why I've gone for the same top five for qualifying as the race just in a slightly different order and then that leads me quite nicely into my bold statement that Sergio Perez will podium in any position in Mexico and that basically just sort of covers my butt for um if he doesn't get a Grand Prix victory I'm still going to get some points if he gets on the podium so I think he is going to get a podium in Mexico and either way if he does stand on any step of the podium it is going to be fantastic to actually see that and his dad is going to be so happy. Oh my God, he's like the happiest man on the planet. And it's going to be amazing to see. So there we go. There are my predictions for this weekend's Mexican Grand Prix. Please let me know in the comments down below what your predictions are and what you are expecting to see from this Mexican Grand Prix. And also get involved by following that link in the top line of the description to be entered into the Audience Prediction Championships. But that is all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed and I will catch you in the next episode with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.